Hello guys, my name is Stephen Odebola. And I'm Carla Simone Spence. All hail Jim Alexander. The J, the I, the M, the M, the Y, the J, the I, the M is Jimmy. It's Jimmy. Well, like I said, it's good to see you guys live and well after I saw the movie. I wanted to start off by asking both of you, how did you get introduced to this script? I know, Stephen, you didn't have much, like you did some short films and all, but pretty good to be on a Paramount lot <laughs> short films. But yeah, it's yeah. an acting career you'd want um, to start that way. But how did you guys get introduced to the script initially and... Were these the roles you guys were originally like cast for? That you were cast for? That you were reading for, in a sense. Yeah. Um, my agent um, sent me the audition, and I was already aware of the YouTube version of Blue Story, so I was familiar with Blue Story becoming a feature-length film. So when it came on my lap, um, okay. I instantly wanted to get involved in it because I was obviously, like I already said, I was already familiar with it. So, yeah. Um, for me, I um, previously worked with Ratman before, um, and then he reached out to me. He wanted me to audition for the role of Leah. Um, I read the script. I was hesitant at first, but um, when I read it, I was really drawn by the character because she is um, she's not a token character, for one. She's very strong. Um, she's like the moral compass of the film. And, yeah, I went into audition. I had to sing, and then I did a... <laughs> it was good. I had to sing, um, like, a, a verse... That was, yeah, very intense, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> and you did well, because you're here. So. Thanks. <laughs> and then I did a chem test with Stephen after, and then... What was it like when you guys first initially met? Like, because, you know, you always talk about, like, chemistry, especially for, for mm -hmm. parts where you guys are romantically involved. How did... You guys seem to be, like, from what I'm getting, like, very, <laughs> like, good vibes. Like, you guys seem uh -huh. very friendly with each other. What was it like initially when you met each other? Was there skepticism, or you guys bonded immediately? Or? No, we were cool. We were cool, um... We spoke a couple of times, you know, the 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 friendship wasn't solid. So yeah, I hold it. So oh, no. <laughs> it wasn't solid like, the way it is now because um yeah, um Ratman actually took us on a date. Mm. Me and her and just left us there. Or a date and just left us there. Uh, to one Was this a surprise kind of thing? Got... No, it wasn't, it wasn't really? they were telling us about it, but we didn't actually didn't know think he was gonna leave though. Exactly, you didn't know he was gonna leave. You just left us there and just yep, you two get to know each other. I was like, oh there. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it was cool, and then um, we had rehearsals, um, and, um, yeah, it was just it was just smooth sailing for when we got on set. Mm -hmm. You know, when I kind of saw the movie, like, I was thinking, like, what does it remind you of, right? I thought, like, a urban, modern Romeo and Juliet meets a heavyweight boxing game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like the, the hype for it yeah, yeah. Uh, versus those two characters. Like, it's it's like a boxing fight, you know? You and, and it's like, that's where I summarize. What were your initial thoughts? Like, how did you view the movie when you read the script? Uh, what sort of things were going through your head and how did you envision it? It's funny you say that because we actually always say to each other it's like a modern, urban Romeo and Juliet. So... Yeah, just reading the script, man, it was it was it was sick because it's a it's a story that's told in London, you know, and this story is like a real story. It's it's, um, it's, it's loosely based on Ratman's childhood. So, yeah, man. <laughs> wow. That in a nutshell, yeah. For me, um, I feel like the most um, the most exciting part was the table read because obviously we had the script, but then um, Ratman said that we could kind of just change it to make it feel like more our own words and natural so when i heard everyone just kind of getting into it i was like well this is going to be good yeah i was wondering how much improvisation you guys did because it mm -hmm. seemed like these were real people talking it's not like you know sometimes you can tell it's acting or like but these were mm -hmm. like real conversations real like kind of interactions between people who know each other how much of it did you guys were able to in a sense bring your own self to it aside from the script for me, I just changed whatever felt unnatural to me and just remixed it. Yeah, I always say I'm not, my character, I'm not too far from Timmy in like real life. Obviously, I'm not a shy kind of guy, but, you know, certain elements that Timmy possesses is, 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 is what I possess as well. So mm -hmm. just using what I know and how I grew up, it, just, it was just easy to get into it. What just, certain things did you relate to a Timmy? Um, I was, um, Timmy's brought up by a Nigerian um, mother, single mother. Um, I was brought up in a... I was brought up in South London, um, so I was very aware. I wasn't foreign to any of the things that you see in the film. So, um, yeah, just using what I know Back helped. Around, right? You know what I mean? Just yeah. using what I know as research to get into the character of Timmy was good. And it allowed me to play with it more. 
You know, what struck me too about it, I didn't know there's kind of gang warfare that goes on in London. This is like what I imagine, like in big cities <laughs> in Chicago, LA, like, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, you know, happening, but I didn't know this kind of thing it happens on because you don't hear about it, you don't see it in film. You know, yeah. you, you see like the football hooligans and all that, that's kind of portrayed as gang, but there's real communities there and real kind of stuff that goes on that's yeah. super relatable to the US. Exactly, because mm-hmm. when I was actually talking to someone that, um, that was one of my friends that was from the States that watched it in the in UK. He was like, wow, I didn't know you had guys. I thought you just sip tea and eat biscuits. I was like, you got a lot to learn. But um, yeah, man, it's, 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 it's bringing awareness, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have you guys been exposed to like, these sort of communities like that? or As in... Yeah, and you're personalized. Have you seen this kind of firsthand? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was I grew up in a state where there was a lot of gang TV around me, and you know sometimes it takes external influences to pull you away from that because otherwise, if you're if you're just in the box, you can't really see outside the box. So, yeah, it was all around me. It was all around me. For me, I feel like um, a lot of people are desensitized to what's happening around them, so they might think they're not affected by it, but really we are. Like. I live in South London as well, and it's happening around me, but I'm not necessarily in that life. But um, people are, like, losing their lives and stuff, but we just kind of see, oh, it was, like, another one that's gone kind of thing. But, yeah, I feel like everyone is affected by it. Mm-hmm. What have you guys learned from this experience working on this movie? There's something kind of a, a realisation that you gained that you maybe didn't have coming into this movie that mm-hmm. now you walked away with uh, understanding better, or even about yourselves personally. For me, I feel like one of the main things that is really good in this film, it shows how um, someone can get to where they are. So, like, they start off, you know, very innocent and very young, and then it kind of just shows the events that kind of lead to someone to get to this life. And I think that was an eye-opener for me, to kind of just understand that side of things. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, man. (laughs) It just shows another side of the story. It just shows how anybody can just get caught up in it. And, you know, a lot of the times in the media... We just see the end result. We never see mm-hmm. the beginning and how they get there. We never see the process. We just see, you know, this fuck was killed or this menace was killed or, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You know, the movie to me really brings out raw emotion on so many fronts. And I like how it's not a story about one character. There's a multiple storylines of characters going to it. Like, it, it could have been a separate movie for a lot of these characters mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. How did you guys kind of approach the script in that sense where there's multiple things happening and multiple characters' lives are being portrayed, exposed, but all kind of comes together? Were you familiarized with the other characters in the movie too Um, and kind of even with the other actors talking about the story in a whole, but even there's like separate parts Mm. of it? You know, it's real life, but it's like the story is real life, you know, and Ratman knew what he was doing when he wrote the script. You know, when you go to school and you're a teenager, you're surrounded by so many different characters. You know, we see um, Hakeem, he was like the class clown, the big guy. Um, we see Marco, energetic guy. We see characters like Leah, um, this, this sweet, innocent girl. We see characters like Timmy, the sweet, kind of nerdy kid. And yeah, man, it's just everyone's a different character. And that's literally how school was. So it was. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually like the, the relationship portrayed by you two guys because it was it was so sweet and it's a, in two versions you don't really find that in movies much yeah. less in, in in real life these days. Um, how did you approach that innocence of these characters? Because it seems like it's it's like a genuine romantic love and, and the way they meet and the way they approach each other it's it's really kind of sweet that you don't see that much in movies because it's always like oh let's just make out and hook up yeah. sort of thing. but here there's like a build and it naturally evolves to it yeah like I said me and obviously um, Carla both went to school in South London so I'm sure we can both relate to when we were young mm-hmm. innocent mm-hmm. and you know I was innocent and you know, had had crushes, had crushes on girls, and doing all the the young dumb stuff. So yeah, I was yeah. just wondering, like, is there a real life experience? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, man, I was actually just using other films as research, like in between, as you know, the nerdy, they're trying to get girls and they're trying to be the cool mm-hmm. kids. So I kind of just used that as research, just getting into Timmy. So yeah. For me, um, I, well, I knew the love story was very important because it kind of carries the film. So I was just. Um, just making sure that it was genuine, you know, that connection was really there and just, um, you know, that scene on the, the sofa, it's very sweet, yeah. it's very innocent and, yeah, just kind of just finding the truth in the scene to kind of make the audience empathise with us, yeah. I love how your character kind of pursues.
Hello guys, my name is Stephen Odobala. And I'm Carla Simone Spence. Perfect. Well, like I said, it's good to see you guys <laughs> live and well after I saw the movie. I wanted to start out by asking both of you, how did you get introduced to this script? I know, Stephen, you didn't have much, like you did some short films and all, but pretty good to be on a Paramount Live <laughs> short films. But yeah, it's yeah. an acting career you'd want um, to start that way. But how did you guys get introduced to the script initially and... Were these the roles you guys were originally like cast for? That you were cast for? That you were reading for, in a sense. Yeah, um, my agent um, sent me the audition, and I was already aware of the YouTube version of Blue Story, so I was familiar with Blue Story becoming a feature-length film. So when it came on my lap, um, okay. I instantly wanted to get involved in it because I was obviously, like I already said, I was already familiar with it. So, yeah. Um, for me, I um, previously worked with Ratman before, um, and then he reached out to me. He wanted me to audition for the role of Leah. Um, I read the script. I was hesitant at first, but um, when I read it, I was really drawn by the character because she is um, she's not a token character, for one. She's very strong. Um, she's like the moral compass of the film. And, yeah, I went into audition. I had to sing, and then I did a... <laughs> it was good. I had to sing, um, like, a, a verse... That was, yeah, very intense, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> and you did well, because you're here. So. Thanks. <laughs> and then I did a chem test with Stephen after, and then... What was it like when you guys first initially met? Like, because, you know, you always talk about, like, chemistry, especially for, for mm -hmm. parts where you guys are romantically involved. How did... You guys seem to be, like, from what I'm getting, like, very, <laughs> like, good vibes. Like, you guys seem uh -huh. very friendly with each other. What was it like initially when you met each other? Was there skepticism, or you guys bonded immediately? Or? No, we were cool. We were cool, um... We spoke a couple of times, you know, the 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 friendship wasn't solid. So yeah, I hold it. So oh, no. <laughs> it wasn't solid like, the way it is now because um yeah, um Ratman actually took us on a date. Mm. Me and her and just left us there. Or a date. And just left us there. Uh, to one... Was this a surprise kind of thing? Got... No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Really? They were telling us about it, but we didn't actually didn't know think... didn't he was going to leave, though. Exactly. You didn't know he was going to leave. You just left us there and said, yep, you two get to know each other. I was like, oh, there. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was cool. And then um, we had rehearsals. Um, and, um, yeah, it was just it was just smooth sailing for when we got on set. Mm -hmm. You know, when I kind of saw the movie, like, I was thinking, like, what does it remind you of, right? I thought, like, a... Hey, Urban modern Romeo and Juliet meets a heavyweight boxing. Game. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like the, the hype for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, versus those two characters, like it's it's like a boxing fight, you know. You and, and it's like that's where I summarize. What were your initial thoughts? Like, how did you view the movie when you read the script? Uh, what sort of things were going through your head, and how did you envision it? It's funny you say that because we actually always say to each other, it's like a modern urban Romeo and Juliet. So. Yeah, just reading the script, man, it was it was it was sick because it's a it's a story that's told in London, you know, and this story is like a real story. It's it's, um, it's, it's loosely based on Ratman's childhood. So, yeah, man. <laughs> wow. That in a nutshell, yeah. For me, um, I feel like the most um, the most exciting part was the table read because obviously we had the script, but then um, Ratman said that we could kind of just change it to make it feel like more our own words and natural so when i heard everyone just kind of getting into it i was like well this is going to be good yeah i was wondering how much improvisation you guys did because it mm -hmm. seemed like these were real people talking it's not like you know sometimes you can tell it's acting or like but these were mm -hmm. like real conversations real like kind of interactions between people who know each other how much of it did you guys were able to in a sense bring your own self to it aside from the script for me, I just changed whatever felt unnatural to me and just remixed it. Yeah, I always say I'm not, my character, I'm not too far from Timmy in like real life. Obviously, I'm not a shy kind of guy, but, you know, certain elements that Timmy possesses is, 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 is what I possess as well. So mm -hmm. just using what I know and how I grew up, it, just, it was just easy to get into it. What just, certain things did you relate to a Timmy? Um, I was, um, Timmy's brought up by a Nigerian um, mother, single mother. Um, I was brought up in a... I was brought up in South London, um, so I was very aware. I wasn't foreign to any of the things that you see in the film. So, um, yeah, just using what I know Back helped. Around, right? You know what I mean? Just using what I know as research to get into the character of Timmy was good. And it allowed me to play with it more. You know what struck me too about it? I didn't know there's kind of gang warfare that goes on in London. This is like what I imagine like in big cities <laughs> in Chicago, LA, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, you know, happening. But I didn't know this kind of 
thing that happens on because you don't hear about it. You don't see it in film. You know, yeah. you, you see like the football hooligans and all that. That's kind of portrayed as gang, but there's real communities there and, and real kind of stuff that goes on that's yeah. super relatable to the U.S. Exactly, because when I was actually talking to someone that, um, that was one of my friends that was from the States that watched it in the, in the UK. He was like, wow, I didn't know you had guys. I thought you just sip tea and eat biscuits. I was like, you got a lot to learn. But um, yeah, man, it's, 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 it's bringing awareness, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you guys been exposed to like, these sort of communities like that? or As in... Yeah, and you're personalized. Have you seen this kind of firsthand? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was I grew up in a state where there was a lot of gang TV around me, and you know sometimes it takes external influences to pull you away from that because otherwise, if you're if you're just in the box, you can't really see outside the box. So, yeah, it was all around me. It was all around me. For me, I feel like um, a lot of people are desensitized to what's happening around them, so they might think they're not affected by it, but really we are. Like. I live in South London as well, and it's happening around me, but I'm not necessarily in that life. But um, people are, like, losing their lives and stuff, but we just kind of see, oh, it was, like, another one that's gone kind of thing. But, yeah, I feel like everyone is affected by it. Mm -hmm. What have you guys learned from this experience working on this movie? There's something kind of a, a realisation that you gained that you maybe didn't have coming into this movie that mm -hmm. um, you walked away with uh, understanding better, or even about yourselves personally. For me, I feel like one of the main things that is really good in this film, it shows how um, someone can get to where they are. So, like, they start off, you know, very innocent and very young, and then it kind of just shows the events that kind of lead to someone to get to this life. And I think that was an eye-opener for me, to kind of just understand that side of things. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, man. <laughs> it just shows another side of the story. It just shows how anybody can just get caught up in it. And, you know, a lot of the times in the media, we just see the end result. We never see the beginning and how they get there. We never see the process. We just see, you know, this fuck was killed or this menace was killed or, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You know, the movie to me really brings out raw emotion on so many fronts. And I like how it's not a story about one character. There's a multiple storylines of characters going to, like, it, it could have been a separate movie for a lot of these characters mm. in a lot of ways. How did you guys kind of approach the script in that sense where there's, multiple things happening and multiple characters' lives are being portrayed, exposed, but all kind of comes together. Were you familiarized with the other characters in the movie too? Um, and kind of even with the other actors talking about the story in a whole, but even there's like separate parts mm. of it. You know, it's real life, but it's like, the story is real life, you know, and Ratman knew what he was doing when he wrote the script. You know, when you go to school and you're a teenager, you're surrounded by so many different characters. You know, we see um, Hakeem, he was like the class clown, the big guy. Yeah. Um, we see Marco, energetic guy. We see characters like Leah, um, this, this sweet, innocent girl. We see characters like Timmy, the sweet, kind of nerdy kid. And yeah, man, it's just everyone's a different character. And that's literally how school was. So it was just, yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually like the, the relationship portrayed by you two guys because it was, it was so sweet and innocent. In two versions, you don't really find that in movies, much yeah. less in, in real life these days. Um, how did you approach that innocence of these characters? Because it seems like it's it's like a genuine romantic love, and, and the way they meet, and the way they approach each other, it's it's really kind of sweet. And you don't see that much in movies because it's always like, oh, let's just make out and hook up, yeah. that sort of thing. But here, there's like a build, and it naturally evolves to it. Yeah, like I said, me and obviously um, Carla both went to school in South London, so I'm sure we can both relate to when we were young, mm -hmm. innocent, mm -hmm. and you know, I was innocent, and you know, had had crushes, had crushes on girls and doing all the the young dumb stuff. So yeah, I was yeah. just wondering, like, is there a real life experience? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, man, I was actually just using other films as research, like in between, as you know, I did nerdy. They're trying to get girls and they're trying to be the cool mm -hmm. kids. So I kind of just used that as research, just getting into Timmy. So yeah. For me, um, I, well, I knew the love story was very important because it kind of carries the film. So I was just um, just making sure that it was genuine, you know, that connection was really there. And just, um, you know, that scene on the, the sofa, it's very sweet, yeah. it's very innocent. And, yeah, just kind of just finding the truth in the scene to kind of make the audience empathize with us, yeah. I love how your character kind of pursued him. <laughs> she was just like, man, I don't know how many guys have just been like a hot girl there. Was it there? Some Cheetos, I just watched a movie. <laughs>
<laughs> that was awesome. I thought it was a nice kind of touch to it. She know? knows what she wants. Yeah, she <laughs> knows what she wants. Yeah, it said a lot of character. Yeah, I was just thinking about it. Like, I don't know why I did that in real life. Uh, thinking about this film, that um, mm-hmm. also kind of resonates on, on a lot of points, is that, you know, you see kind of what is life like in, in a different country, but it's relatable to all aspects. Like, mm-hmm. these are people and characters, even <laughs> seemingly it's, you know, London, sorry, based in London and stuff, but it's so relatable to outside world. I mean, <laughs> you guys are here promoting in the U.S. How do you think yeah. it's going to kind of resonate with audiences worldwide? Because I felt it really did in a lot of yeah. ways. It's not just a London British story exclusively. I mean, we're all humans. We all have the same emotions. We all experience love. We all experience loss and yeah, that's why it's so universal because we can all relate to every little thing that happens, I think. Yeah, um, like what she said, um, it's a story that's in London, but it's relatable worldwide. You know, there's gangs everywhere. There's people that get caught up into the life everywhere. So, yeah, we're just, we're just happy it's relatable. Mm-hmm. When you guys read the script, did you know, did you have a feeling when you were reading along that <laughs> we're going to die at some point here? Um, especially your character. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you get that feeling? Or was there the mystery when you were reading and then, then you know, getting to that part or, or approaching that, that would happen, <laughs> the fate of it? Honestly, when I read it, I, I didn't expect it, but it was kind of like the, the build-up of, oh, Timmy's kind of, you know, alone, and then I'm meant to be meeting him. I'm like, hold on a second, if they're attacking him, what am I going to do? And then I get to it, and I'm like, oh, okay, um, this happens. But I thought when I was filming it, I really wanted that to be my last day, to kind of just build up to that moment, because it is such a an emotional, heightened moment. But, yeah, I, I didn't expect it. I didn't have I was reading the script like it was a book uh-huh. but obviously rem- remembering that I'm playing the character yeah. I read it all the way to the end and saw that I died I was like <laughs> damn damn right. man why are you going to do me like that <laughs> but um yeah man it was fun man and it kept giving me teases because obviously when me and Leah got into a situation with um you know with Marco yeah I thought it wouldn't happen there but then it brought me back and I was like okay cool I don't Shoo. <laughs> and then I read it again and I was like ah so I do but um yeah, man, even reading the script to gave me a roller coaster of emotions. Yeah, so. there's so many teases in it. It's like exactly. the, the, you know, the eyes closed, like, is he going to wake up or are they going to wake up there or not? Go. It's that moment of, like, anticipation you get for a few seconds there. there. You go. And that kind of threw it off. I mean, I don't know if the story could have been done. It, it had more, much more power and it was fittingly with their romance that it would end up like a Romeo and Juliet kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. That's what brings it to it, that, you know... That was these two people found each other and connected on such a level they couldn't live without each other in mm-hmm. a lot of ways too. So I thought that was fitting. Um, I wanted to ask you guys personally, what sort of things do you guys like to do for fun or enjoy any hobbies, activities? I mean, um, all the acting things obviously rise. Um, things are happening, but what sort of things do you like to do in London? What is like a day in a life of each other? Uh, going out, um, going to the movies. I like traveling. I like traveling around the world. I like seeing different countries. Um, yeah, what do I like doing? <laughs> Football, football, football like playing football in my spare time. You do? Yeah, and yeah, many other things, man. What's your team? Man United. Man United. Oh, yeah. Your yeah. Time Come on. <laughs> <laughs> no shade. But you got the Man United right, so. You know, there you go. Yeah, there right, you go. Right. I'm laughing because I'm a bit of a grandma. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, no, I just like some because I'm so busy sometimes. I just like to stay indoors and watch Netflix. Honestly, that's what I enjoy. But I do go out occasionally and stuff. But yeah, I, I love. I'm a home person. <laughs> Take her on a trip somewhere around the world. Home person. <laughs> I love my house. <laughs> Where do you guys kind of see your careers? Where'd you like to go for now with this movie? Obviously, it's gonna you know, getting some acclaim and attention, and mm-hmm. it's, it's a really good place to be, but where do you see yourself in terms of, of different genres and characters you'd like to play kind of going forward? Um, I've always said I'm open to many different genres, you know, because every different character, is a, as an actor, is a learning opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, you get to put yourself in another person's shoes. And, you know, hopefully... One of these days, I might be in a film in Paramount. I might be in a, another <laughs> film in Paramount. I'm another film in the, the You know what I'm saying? Another film in the States. And that's, that's the goal, man. That's mm-hmm. the goal. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of our stories being told, especially in the US, more of them anyway. So I definitely want to dive into that. Yeah, just um, do some films over here in the US. Um, as many different roles as possible. Um, 
as far away from as me as possible and just to be able to just really enjoy the craft and enjoy the story yeah just telling a really good story for me with international with parasite even winning like worldwide mm -hmm. film is getting acclaim it's not just like yeah. studio films and, and the u.s is the place to be you can make quality films and you know get them seen around the world anywhere in mm -hmm. a lot of ways do you guys envision yourselves moving to la or want to continue doing kind of you know, movies in London. What's kind of the plan in that sense? 100%. I've always said I want to go to LA. The weather, the weather's got me already. <laughs> yeah. The weather's got me already. You know, in London, it's always, a lot of the times it's just rainy and it just puts a damper on your mood. Yeah. But um, here, yeah, definitely, man. Definitely, man. You know, it's, 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 it's film industry central. So, yeah. Um, for me, I think a bit of both. Yeah, because my family's in London, so I'd, I'd want to be with them as well. So I'm just happy to live wherever I'm filming and then go back home. Mm -hmm. Any particular influences you guys have, like whether actor-wise or someone that mm -hmm. you really kind of like to emanate or maybe study in a sense that, that really kind of evolves you as an actor to what you like to watch? Um, well, I wouldn't say emanate, but I really, really love Viola Davis. Like she's, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's just, I don't know, when she came out with her show and she was just kind of, you know, breaking stereotypes and bringing like a more diverse appearance of like a black woman on TV shows was just great. So, yeah, people like Viola Davis. Um, I can't put my finger on, mate, I've got so many names in my head, but one of them is, I, I say Denzel Washington. Denzel. Denzel, yeah, he, he's the guy. He's the guy. He's the guy. I definitely aspire to be like that guy, man. Any, uh, any favorite Denzel? I know it's a tough one, but... Any films? Yeah. Training Day. Training yeah. Day. Training Day. He's sick. He does have a little bit of elements. Of yeah, man. Training Day yeah. Jewish, there you go. When you think there you go. It. Yeah, man, he's dope. Mm. He's dope. No question. You know, I was wondering, though, did you guys ever figure out the, the, the Blue Story title of it? Uh, I'm still trying to figure oh, out. Oh, you don't, you don't know why it's called Blue Story? No, I don't know. Basically, where the film is set, it's a set in Lewisham, an area called Lewisham. But you mm -hmm. see in UK, we, well, in London, we have different boroughs. Mm -hmm. And different boroughs have different colours. Uh -huh. And Lewisham, the colour for the borough is blue. So, <laughs> because it's based on a real story, we call it the Blue Story. Because it's based in Lewisham, mm -hmm. which is the blue borough. You get it? Yeah, well, you know, you know, you've got to be from the area, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm kind of curious, you know, the poster's got the blue thing on it. One yeah. Time, and I'm like, what else makes it a blue yeah. story? It's kind of a dark story, really. Yeah, you know, it is. All the stuff that's going on exactly. in it. Exactly. And the violence and all that. Yeah. Uh, I was curious, when you guys shot in these communities, you were shooting, like, there wasn't a set or a lot, like, here. Mm. But um, did you kind of interact with people, maybe walking by? I'm kind of curious, because it seemed like it was, like, right on site where you guys were filming, and... Right on locations of real neighborhoods. Yeah, like, there was even one time we actually filmed in, you know, in a well-known gang, right, the gang neighborhood in the fight. Remember the fight scene? What fight scene? When, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and there was people roaming around, and obviously they're looking and thinking, whoa, is there a real fight happening over here? <laughs> so they called all their troops, started patrolling the area, but luckily, obviously, they saw Ratman, and obviously everyone knows Ratman is doing a big film at the time. Mm -hmm. So... He's like, oh, right, man, we doing? He's like, oh, I'm shooting a film. He's like, oh, okay, I thought it was the apps. <laughs> I thought it was, you know, they thought it was enemies that were having fights in their, in their, in their area. Yeah. So, yeah, once they, once they realised it was Ratman, they kind of just skirted off. Some, some of them was, was there, actually. There you go, because they, they, they probably thought it was a, a whole different situation. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, so... <laughs> Wow, that that's crazy. That, you see, that's that's a kind of real life thing that you happens when you do a movie like it. Did you guys like that sort of thing, being kind of right on site and location, like right in these communities? Because it gives you, in a sense, it's a character to the story. I felt like the locations were a character to the story. How much did it help your characters to be right there on site and you know make it so authentic in that sense? You no, know, in the same way, raps wanted to make it as real as possible. He got the locations as well to make it feel as real as possible because where some of these things were happening, it was happening in those locations. So we needed to be in those locations to make it feel real, and so we can get so we can get the right atmosphere. If you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So yeah.
Um, like we literally filmed outside a cinema that I used to go to when I was growing up in school, which was surreal. It was like the maddest moment. And like I remember watching it with my friends, and they were like, "Oh my god, this is literally like how it was in school." So I thought that was really important to just kind of show a true depiction of what was happening at the time. Yeah, I'm curious, what was the reaction from your friends and family now that the film is out? And like, what sort of texts and are people hearing you haven't talked to? <laughs> oh, that happens. That happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, my family loved it. They're supportive. It, there was this mad moment when, um, before it came out, the poster was on the buses, it was on the underground, it was on posters. It was just so surreal just seeing your face everywhere and people coming up to you and you'd be like, oh my God, you're in the film. And it's just been really nice to have, because everyone that's come up to me, I don't know about you, but like they've been so lovely and like they've received it so well. And like some people even thanked us for like showing that story because it's so true to them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. <laughs> it's, really, it's, really, it's, it's good that you had an actual reaction of people yeah. coming in yeah. saying that yeah. you've been impacted and influenced by mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. You know, I wanted to, to kind of end off. Are you guys all friends? You guys hang out now after the, the filming of it? Yeah. Now the story's wrapped? You feel that you've made lifelong kind of friendships and mm -hmm. relationships? 100%. 100%. It's weird because you're not, you're not as that, always lucky to be able to work with people that you get on with so well. And we just gone so well because everyone's just so genuine, real nice and we just clicked like as soon as we were on set because I didn't know any of them before I got there yeah completely yeah same and um, you know straight after we wrapped last year some of the guys we all made a group chat and you know obviously she's not in it that, she's not in it that's why she's doing <laughs> but, um, yeah like we all made a group chat and we're all in contact we keep each other updated with um, you know how acting careers are going and what's next for everybody and yeah Everyone's in contact. Good things are coming. So I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was tremendous. Thanks, you know, man. Uh, that anyone can really relate. You know? Thank you. I didn't grow up in anything like that, and a lot of people didn't, but you understand these yeah. stories because there's people like these that we encounter every day in our lives, you know, in some exactly. form. Like you mentioned, the, the, the people at school we go to it and whatnot, and, mm. and, you know, the relationships we form. So I thought it was a really movie, a movie that can really get to a lot of people and put in perspective what misconception too is communication i thought there was a lot of it about, about communication mm -hmm. how communication gone wrong can turn into so many exactly. terrible things exactly you, know, you just talk to people and kind of you know let them know what you think and vice versa so there you go. awesome job thank you so no much man. thank really you man appreciate, appreciate it talking to you. <laughs> thanks man working on mike <laughs> <laughs>